guys, you have about five minutes until we begin. Use this time to go grab a piece of paper and something to write with like we have the weeks before. Remember, when the countdown ends, we will start. Go now.
Kingdom Kids Online. I'm excited to get into the story with you guys today, but remember, next Wednesday, we will be back in person on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Can't wait to see you there. But for this week, let's get started. Our story for this week is about how Jesus raises a dead girl back to life. But also, before he does that, he ends up healing a woman who has been sick for 12 whole years. So before we get into the story, there'll be some of you guys that are probably in the fifth grade that are 12 years old, or maybe you're 11 and you're about to be 12 years old. And everybody else is going to be younger than that. So all of you guys picture being sick your entire life. Picture from the day that you were born until right now, having a very serious sickness that made you feel really bad all the time. That's how this woman felt. So as we get started, I want to start back at the beginning. When we talked about Jesus casting out the spirit of um, the evil spirit last week, we said that he had gotten off a boat, okay? So Jesus actually got back on that boat and sailed to another part of the sea and got off, okay? So he got off at another part um, of the sea for this story. And the second he got off the boat, this guy named Jairus ran up to him and fell to his knees. Now, he fell to his knees because he was so upset and he was so scared and he was hurting. And he was hurting because his daughter was very, very sick. In fact, she was about to die. And he was begging Jesus. He was like, please, Jesus, please come with me. I need you to heal my daughter. Well, Jesus being who he is, of course he went with Jairus to try to help heal his daughter. And when he was on his way, he ran into this woman found him right he ran into this woman now remember this when jesus was here on earth he usually had a big crowd of people following him because they had heard about him and they had heard about the miracles of what he was doing so they would follow him to see so there's woman this woman that was very very sick she couldn't get to jesus and she didn't think that she was going to have enough time and there were going to be too many people for her to be able to talk to jesus personally so with the huge crowd of people around, she thought, hmm, maybe I could just touch the hem of his clothes. Now that sounds really, really goofy, okay? When you think about it, you're like, what is touching somebody's clothes gonna do for anybody? Well, nothing, because do clothes in and of themselves have any kind of superpower or power to them? Does my shirt have any special power? No. Did Jesus' shirt or his robe or anything he had on have any power? No, it's just clothes. But does Jesus have power? Yeah, he has a lot of power. And so she had faith that if I just touch his clothes, he is that powerful. He is powerful enough that even if I just touch his clothes, it could heal me. That's what she believed. And that's some strong faith. So the Bible says that she touched the hem of Jesus's clothes and immediately like that. She was healed of all her sicknesses and all of her pain. Now, keep in mind, this woman had been to all the doctors. She had spent all her money trying to get healed from whatever she was sick from, right? But nobody knew, nobody could figure it out. None of the doctors could heal her. But the second she touched Jesus's robe, she was healed because she had faith, the Bible says. Jesus, it says in the Bible that the second she touched his clothes and she was healed, Jesus could feel that power leave him and going into her. Now, it doesn't mean Jesus was less powerful. It means he knew that he had healed somebody just then, right? And so it says he turned around and he kept asking the crowd, who just touched my clothes? And he was asking, who touched my clothes? But nobody would fess up. Nobody was admitting that they touched Jesus' clothes because in reality, there was probably many people that had tried to touch his clothes, you know? Imagine somebody famous walking by and people reaching out to try to touch them, right? It's, it happens and people like tried to touch them and they might have, you know, grazed his garment or whatever it may be, right? They might have touched him, but not with the purpose that this woman touched him for, right? And so this woman knew Jesus was talking about her when he was asking, who touched my clothes? She knew. So she confessed, she stood up and she confessed that it was her who touched Jesus, Jesus' clothes because she wanted to be healed of the sickness. And I want to read to you what the Bible actually says Jesus responded to her. So Jesus said to her, your faith has healed you. You are now free from your suffering. 
So Jesus was telling her, because of your faith, because you believe that I had enough power that if you just touch my clothes that you would be healed, you have been healed. Your suffering is gone away. That's pretty amazing. That's a pretty amazing and big faith, right? A faith that I have to try to have every single day. It's not easy, but God tells us, I can do those kind of crazy, miraculous things. You just have to believe that I can. Well, right after this moment happens and this woman of 12 years, who's been sick for 12 years, gets healed. People come running out of Jairus' house and they're frantically screaming and they're going, Jesus, 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 Jairus' daughter has died. So Jesus was on his way, remember, to Jairus' house to heal his daughter who was sick and who was about to die. And the girl died before Jesus got there. And Jesus, the first thing he does is he looks at Jairus and he says, do not be afraid. Have faith. That's what he says. He tells him, do not be afraid. Have faith. Well, when Jesus got into Jairus' house, he told all the people in there that were weeping, they were crying, right? It's really sad. I don't know if you've ever been in a room when somebody died or maybe people were talking about somebody that had just died, but it's very sad. These people were like that. They were so, so sad. They were crying so much, right? Well, when Jesus got in the room, he looked at all of them and he says, don't cry, she's just sleeping. Well, their response to that was laughter. They just started laughing. They were like, Jesus, she's not sleeping. Like we just saw her die. You're, you're crazy, you're nuts, right? That's what their response was. But Jesus didn't mind them, right? Instead, the Bible says he took the girl's hand. And when he took her hand, this is what he said to her. Little girl, I say to you, get up. And the Bible says immediately, she came back to life again. And she started walking around like she had just been sleeping and nothing was wrong. And the people were amazed by what had happened but because of Jairus' faith, right, his daughter was alive again. So remember, there are two accounts in this story of people that were healed. The woman that had been sick for 12 years, that's most of you guys' entire life, and then some. And then the girl that had died and come back to life. And Jesus healed both of those people. But the Bible tells us it was because somebody had had faith in him. They had strong faith. They believed that he could do it. And that's what Jesus wanted from them. Jesus just wanted them to have faith that he could do it. And he did. And so the lesson is that we need to have faith, right? Jesus didn't just heal in the, in the Old Testament or the New Testament, or God didn't heal in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament. And then it stopped after the Bible, you know, times happened. Jesus still heals today. He heals through the Holy Spirit, right? We talked about that. So God healed in the Old Testament. Jesus healed in New Testament times. And then after Jesus died, the Holy Spirit heals us now. The third part of God, right? The Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, that lives around us, right? That's who heals us today. We just have to have faith. We have to ask, right? So I want you to grab your piece of paper really fast that I asked you to get during the countdown. And I want you to take the paper and the pen and write down somebody's name that is that you know that is sick. Most of us know somebody that's sick. It could be a big sickness or it could be a really small sickness. But don't be, sh don't be shy about the sickness or think it's too big or too much for God, right? I want you to take that and I want you to write their name down on this piece of paper. And I want you to pray. When this video is over, I want you to pray for that person and ask them to be healed. Ask God to heal them. Now, when we ask God to heal somebody, does that mean every single time that person is going to be healed at the exact moment that we want them to? No, we're not promised that because then God would be healing on our time when we thought was best. But who really knows best? God. So we have to wait on him and his timing to heal us. For some people, when they pray for healing, it might happen immediately. 
It might be this miraculous thing that immediately they get healed. For other people, it might be way later on in life, right? They might deal with the sickness like this woman for 12 years or for longer, but then they get this miraculous healing from this illness, from this sickness, right? But for some people, healing might not come until they reach heaven. We are promised that our bodies will be made perfect, right? Our bodies will be made perfect when we get to heaven. That's what we're promised. So we know that when we reach heaven, all of sickness, all of our tears, our pain, our sadness, all of that will be wiped away. So if this person knows Jesus that you're praying for, then their time to be healed might come when they get to heaven, right? But all of those things are healing, are healing from God. And so we need to have faith that one of those is going to take place. But we need to ask too, right? Jairus ran to Jesus and he fell on his knees and he asked, please come help me. My daughter is about to die. She's very sick, right? He asked and he had faith and that's why his daughter was healed. And so we need to pray. We need to ask and we need to have faith. But we also need to be okay with whatever God responds, whether that's immediate healing for that person or for yourself, or if it's later down the line, or if it's when we get to heaven. It's all healing from God and it's all amazing. So next, as we head into our next thing, we're gonna use our, we're gonna say our memory verse, which talks about healing from God and sadness and sorrow being wiped away. So let's review our memory verse real fast. All right, let's read our verse together. So you guys read with me. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Revelation 21, verse 4, part A. So this is only the first half of a verse, okay? So let's read it again together, and then you'll read yourself. Ready? Go. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Revelation 21, verse 4. Four, part A. Now, you read it again really fast on your own. All right, great job on the memory verse. Let's head into our object lesson. All right, for our object lesson today, I'm going to show you a really cool trick with the ping pong ball, okay? So I actually have a power, a super, oops, a superhero power, a supernatural power, okay? I can raise this ping pong ball by just speaking to it. All I have to do is speak a command to it. Kind of like Jesus spoke a command to the storm and calmed the storm, the story we talked about the other week. So I'm gonna speak to this ping pong ball and show you guys that I can make it rise up with just a command, okay? So on three, I'm gonna show you guys. Prepare to be amazed, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Get up. Well, that didn't work, okay? Let me try again a little bit louder this time. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Get up. Obviously, that still didn't work. So, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get you guys to say it with me on three. Maybe it just needs more people, more power, right? So on three, we're all gonna say it at the same time. So if you're at home watching or wherever you're at in the car, just say it with me, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Get up. Now, of course that didn't work, right? That's silly, that's stupid, honestly. We cannot raise this ping pong ball up with one simple command. We're not God, right? We can't do these kind of things, but God can. So we have a hair dryer here now. We're gonna um, imagine this hair dryer is like God, okay? That's what this hair dryer represents for us. And this hair dryer is going to raise up this ping pong ball. Now, let me clarify. There is nothing wrong with this ping pong ball, okay? Like there's no strings attached to it. I didn't do anything to it. It is a normal ping pong ball, I promise, okay? I don't know how to make you believe that otherwise. You're not here to touch it, but I promise this is a normal ping pong ball. Now, we're about to see it rise up, okay? So, 
Now really prepare to be amazed because it's gonna work this time, I promise. Okay, maybe we'll have to give it a couple tries, but it's gonna work. So count down with me from three, okay? Ready? Three, two, one. All right, let's try again. Ready? Three, two, one. It's pretty cool, right? We'll try one more time, see if we can get it better. Ready? Three, two, one. <laughs> There we go. All right, that one was way better. So you see, this hair dryer is like God, right? He raised up the ping pong ball with just one command. Get up. He raised up the girl with one simple command. He told her to get up and she got up, right? This is a silly little ping pong ball. But when you, when you think about the story or if you maybe just remember later, Oh, Erica, Miss Erica did that silly trick with the ping pong ball and the hair dryer. But you won't remember just a ping pong ball and a hair dryer and a cool trick. But that instead you'll remember that that was just a silly ping pong ball. But God has the power to actually raise humans from the dead, to heal us from our sickness, right? He has that kind of power. He just asks that we believe. Now, I am so excited that you joined me today for our lesson and our object lesson, but I'm even more excited that I will see you again really soon in person. Well, that's a wrap for our final week of Kingdom Kids Online. I am so excited that you guys watched today, and if you've watched any of the other weeks, thank you. But I am even more excited that next week, a week from today, we will be back for Wednesday nights at church in person, all right? So don't forget, next Wednesday at 6 p.m., we will be back to be in person and play all of our games and learn and do our music and everything back in person. I'm so excited and I can't wait to see you there. And remember, we have church in person this Sunday at 9 a.m., all right? I can't wait to see you guys there. There, I'm so excited. Bye.